The 15 megalithic sites in Peru, or are they? You decide. In this quick video, I will use Google Earth to show you the north-south orientation and also elevation of the 15 sites that have been referred to in Peru as megalithic. And I'm curious if you agree. At the end of the video, please comment if you feel, like I do, that not all of these 15 are in fact megalithic. To me, being a megalithic site is about mystery and size. By mystery, I mean that we don't truly know the who, when, why, and how of that site. So let's get started. I'm going to go through them very quickly, and you let me know if you agree. There are people that have said these are megalithic. Let's go from west to east. Let's go to Huaytara. Now, Huaytara is at an altitude of 8,720 feet. It sits on the edge of a village, a small village, and it is the only one that is actually occupied as, as a megalithic site. It's a church. This building has one side that faces a predominant wind and some damages there. Some people say it's solar blast or solar flare, but this faces northeast. And it's important as we go through these sites that we indicate the direction to which it faces. It watches the sunrise in the east and go across the sky this way. Although this site has been referred to as megalithic, I for one feel that it's Inca or possibly even Spanish. Next location, Vilcas Waman. To the east, Vilcas Waman has a lot of doorways. It is at an altitude of 11,450 feet. It faces northwest. The church itself faces northwest, and the stonework predominantly along here faces northwest. To this area over here is a, a pyramid that is built by the Incas. They're saying from stone that was stolen from this area. This area also has what's been called solar blast, but the solar blast comes from this side, the northern side, as opposed to what you saw at Huaytara, which is from the southwest. So it makes you wonder why would there be solar blast coming from not only something other than east or west, but north and south from two different locations. Next stop is Yurik Rumi. Now Yurik Rumi is at 11,000 150 feet. This is the location to which the last Inca rulers were trapped and then ultimately killed by the Spanish conquistadors. This is mostly, there is no real structure, but there's a lot of nice stonework in this area and the valley that it's in pretty much faces south and north, so there isn't anything to be gained by figuring out its orientation. The next location is Machu Picchu. And Machu Picchu doesn't need any introduction. Everybody knows the one. It is the most visited site in Peru. And its orientation at the altitude of only 7,972 feet, its orientation is north and south. I mean, the sun comes up over here, goes across the sky, 7,972 feet. And a lot of people think that that seems strange. I always thought that was the, the location that's up in the clouds. But in relativity to the river that goes around it, it is up there. The river itself is at its lowest point. This is the Yurubamba River. It flows from the, the east all the way to the west, which is kind of backwards when you think about it. So, and it is at a very low altitude at this point after it's already cut through the Sacred Valley far to the east. The next location is Oleante Tambo, which is my favorite because the best stonework in the Sacred Valley is found at Oleante Tambo. This site was under construction when something happened and a lot of great clues are to be found here. Oleante Tambo is at 9,160 feet and oddly enough it faces southeast and even in this satellite photo you can see that it's sitting in a shadow these terraces are in the shadows a lot of the time um, especially during their winter so our next stop is Kia Rumiak across the valley into the south across the mountains into the south Kia Rumiak 
sits at 9,186 feet, and this is the home of the Moonstone. The Moonstone, oddly enough, though, only faces east. It's on the side of this waka, and it faces true east, which makes it interesting in the fact that at least it's true in one direction or the other, but it's not facing north or south in a way that would be able to read the path of the moon. So, that's Kiarumia. Next stop, we're going eastward to Chinchero, which is a site that people don't realize is actually quite huge. The plaza has a church at the edge of it, like so many, where the Spanish built on it. But around the area, there are actually several terrace systems that are pyramidal in shape, and they don't really show up in this satellite photo. But in this area, there are these square terraces that, and a lot of different wakas that are rather intriguing. Chinchero faces north, it just about due north, so it's getting a full blast of the sun. And did I mention that it's at an altitude of 12,380 feet? So it is one of the tallest, if not the tallest. Next stop. To the south, Sacks of Wayman. Sacks of Wayman is the site to see the largest and most incredibly fit stones in the world. This edge looks like a fortress, but this edge doesn't. There are windows on this side. Well, let's call them niches. They don't have a view of any type, and this side has the very famous uh, walls of Sacks of Wayman. This hill is called Rodadero, and this looks like an arena, and there are plenty of walkers out in the back area, and uh, it does not look <laughs> like a quarried area. This is a very mysterious place, and it is definitely megalithic. Next door, just down the road, is Kenko. Now, did I mention that both Kenko and Saxa Wayman are at 12,140 feet? Kenko is a large waka, but it has built onto the edge of it a lot of nice polygonal megalithic work. And down here, this area that's called, well, Little Kenko, actually has a perimeter that looks like the footings of what Saxa Wayman has on its north side. This faced south, but most of the stones have been robbed. So, next stop is the Cori Concha, which is a thousand feet lower at an altitude of 11,200 feet. But I'd like to mention that the roads seem to lead from Saxa Wayman into this area of Cusco, which is loaded with a lot of polygonal stones, including the 12-sided stone right in here closer to St. Augustine's Cathedral. This is the Cori Concha. Next stop is Tambo Machai. Tambo Machai is at an altitude of 12,350 feet, and this is known as the Bath of the Incas. Now it faces north northeast, and it's in a valley, so the water comes down through these rocks, makes its way out, and uh, well, its orientation is northeast. And it is nestled in a valley up in the highlands. Next stop would be Pizak. Now, Pizak is unique in the fact that its stones are straight cut. This is a fortress that is all over this mountain. It extends all the way to the back. Over here, there's a lot of nice stonework. But Pizak itself is has a different type of stonework, and it is at an altitude of 9,750 feet. Now, I'd always thought Pizak was even taller than that, or at a greater altitude than that, but nope. It's at the same basic altitude as Oliente Tambo. Next stop is a location that very few people know about. It's Huatutu. Now, Huatutu is a good two and a half hours to the east and on a different river that actually flows into the Amazon. And it's facing due west. So, I've seen that all these locations have no standard orientation, north, south, east, or west, towards the sun, away from the sun. Um, 
rather interesting. Next stop, all the way to Lake Titicaca, almost into Bolivia, are the Cotimbo Towers. And the Cotimbo Towers are at an altitude of more than 13,000 feet. Some people say that these are energy towers. They are very unique. So now let's come back to the overall view of everything. Well, that makes 14 sites. So where is the 15th site? I don't know what it's called and I don't know where it is. Um, I've seen these pictures and I've seen the videos and I can't figure it out. If you know what the name of this site is, let me know. And then that makes 15. So which ones do you think are megalithic? What's your vote? Let me know. Put it in the comments. I look forward to hearing from you. And uh, that sums it up. This A special thanks to my favorite subscriptions. Please check out their works. I hope that you find my videos to be interesting and educational. If yes, please like and share. Thank you.